Hello, I'm Mark from Productive Computing and Productive Computing University. Thanks for joining us in this lesson. Wanted to share with you a lesson excerpt from a larger course called API Fundamentals for FileMaker Developers. In this course, we start at the very beginning with your first API integration, and then we graduate all the way to learning and mastering the FileMaker Data API, which is where we spend more than half our time learning that particular API because it's fairly advanced, but also very useful. In this particular lesson, we get introduced to a very important script step called Execute FileMaker Data API, which allows you to query and modify your data directly from the database using this different method and script step. To learn more, visit us at Productive Computing University and enroll in the course called API Fundamentals for FileMaker Developers. As always, thanks for watching and enjoy the lesson. In this lesson, we talk about API Level 5, this will be an introduction to the specific script step called Execute FileMaker Data API, which sets the stage for everything we do forward in this section of the course. So what are we talking about here in level five? We are focusing all our attention on a single API type, and that is our very own FileMaker Data API. So FileMaker files themselves can be a repository as source data. So up till now, we've been working with external APIs, APIs provided by various providers across the planet, each one specializing in something different. But our very own FileMaker file is in fact an API itself. And that's what this section is all about, talking about how to exploit, work with, and utilize FileMaker's own data API. So let's read a little bit about FileMaker data API now. And I'm consulting a dedicated set of documents this is called the Claris Data API Guide. And we read, the FileMaker Data API is an application programming interface that allows web services to access databases hosted by FileMaker Server or FileMaker Cloud. It's REST format. Your web service or application calls the FileMaker Data API to obtain an authentication token for access to a hosted database. It then uses that token in subsequent calls to create records, update records, delete records, and perform find requests. Results are returned in JSON. Now you might say to yourself, why didn't we start with this API first, since it is FileMaker and that's most likely an important part of our development process. And the reason is, it turns out that it's a very robust API requiring more demands than most. It requires additional security options. It requires session-based tokens. It requires the use of a header and data within a curl message. It requires that our messages are constructed as JSON formatted text for any kind of query, even a simple get. So that's what makes this a level five integration. It also supports pagination, advanced finds, multi-criteria finds, data sorting, container management, global fields, and even triggering scripts. Not to mention, in order to even get started with this API, on a file that you're hosting, you need FileMaker server set up, configured, secured, locked down. With the API turned on, you need a FileMaker file that's shareable with the API security set up, ready to go. And you need to know quite a bit about FileMaker in general to prepare layouts, fields, and a construct to allow your FileMaker data to be shared in a way that is both secure and useful. So when you add all of that up, this is for sure a level five integration and something certainly worth graduating to. So now that you know a little bit about what's in store for us, I use the remaining time in this lesson to talk about something that makes it super easy to get started with this robust API. And that is to use an existing script step called Execute FileMaker Data API, which executes the API locally in the file that you're actually working with. In other words, it calls itself. Why I like this particular script step is because it removes all of the security mandates, the session-based tokens, the curl, and it just leaves the minimum required to talk to the local FileMaker data API. So we'll demonstrate this here in a second. Now we will be constructing a JSON formatted text request, and these are the different keys and options that we have when we format that request. So we have a wide array of features and functionalities to look through. Believe it or not, the only required element for pulling data is this one key here, the key called layouts. 
we're going to start there at the very beginning and just make this simple call with this simple script step. And then we'll make it more elaborate as the lessons go on. So I've renamed our file yet again. We have level five API demo. I'm going to open that up and we will do a fifth tab and I'll simply call it FileMaker Data API. And I want a single field in the demo table called FM Data API Results. And we'll make that a text-based field. So we'll put that field here on the layout and we'll make it quite large so that we can show a lot of different data, especially on the vertical. And I'll even go the extra step and include a vertical scroll bar. There we go. All right, we'll need an execute button. So let me just do this. Copy that request button from a previous lesson. Put it way here at the top. That's fine. And now let's create a new script. I'll create a new folder called level five integrations. Put that where it belongs here at the end and a new script. And I'll call this execute FileMaker data API to remind us that this is the script step, not to be confused with the standard API from a file shared with FileMaker server. So to keep it super simple, we'll just use the one script step, execute FileMaker data API. So then we have the usual options, a target. Normally I put dollar results. That's what you've seen me do up until now. I'm going to actually put this right in the system. That way the JSON can persist and we won't need to be in debugger in order to analyze it. Then we have the request itself and you have just an open calculation field. So if we refer back to the documentation, I had mentioned that the one requirement, which is really not listed as a requirement, but it is a requirement for a simple get, is the key layouts. So all I need to do is JSON, JSON set element layouts. Value will be the layout name of our file, which I can see it here in the background, main. And the JSON type is JSON string. And that's it. Now let's execute that. And there's our JSON. Let's add another script step to format that. So this will be a set field. We'll target the field that we just set, API results, and we'll do a simple formatting. And the field we want to format is here. Try that again. Actually, let's do a commit record request. It's always a good idea after you add data to something. With this one request, an invisible FileMaker session is happening in the background, in a sense, and it's talking directly to the data, but first it goes to the main layout and pulls everything it sees from the main layout. So we're seeing everything under each tab, and then we have two main keys with a code of zero, meaning success, and a message verifying okay. Then the rest of this is in the response key. Then within the response key, we have data. Then we break into an array. And that breaks into data and data info. So the data is actually the data from the fields. The data info is, in a sense, the metadata from the request. It indicates the file name, the total found count, the layout we're on, the return count, the table name, and the total record count. So a lot of good information here. This will become even more important when we start introducing find requests where we'll need to know exactly how many records came back in the results. So that's it. So now let's change our layout to another layout we have here, which is called Countries Ageify. So I'll go back into my script and simply change that. And we will change it from the main layout to Countries Ageify. And execute that instead. Now we have information from that layout. And we have each record as well, not just the one record because this table has multiple countries. You can see that here, a lot of data being returned, each one representing a record. And we have 195 in the found count. Notice how we get the first 100. So just like we learned with the movie database, its default is to pull a certain amount at a time, not necessarily the full found set. So if we wanted to adjust the return count, we actually have a, an option for that, which is called limit. So if I put my limit at 200, that should change things quite a bit. 
So now let's add to our JSON and we'll add another key to this. There's our first key. This will be our second key. Limit 200. This will be a JSON number. There we go. Now let's request this. And it happened just that fast. But now we have 195 in the found count versus the 100 because we told the limit to go up. Now, if we want to deal with pagination, we can use the word offset, the record number of the first record in the range of records in the current layout. And that's the record number of the first record in the range of records in the current layouts table. So this is something we'd have to keep track of on our own. If we pulled 100, our offset will be 101. If we pulled 200, our offset would be 201, meaning we want to start the next request at 201 and pull from there. As you can see, this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the power and functionality and feature set that we have with the Data API. But now you have a playground that you can experiment with right here in our demo file. And this is a great way to start getting familiar with the Data API and its power without the constraints of the security mechanism, which we're about to learn in the upcoming lessons. So if you're interested in taking the full course API Fundamentals for FileMaker Developers, you can enroll at ProductiveComputingUniversity.com. Thanks for watching.